now he's the shove it man. Shove it squad, it's time to get back on track with my Patreon request. I'm pretty sure I saw an angry mob gathering on a cliff towards Bridgewater Bay. And if I don't get a move on today, they're going to make me pay. And the hawk isn't a pussy, but I'm starting to spray. I'm trying my hardest. I just can't do more than that. What isn't clear about that? Do I need to speak slower? Pronounce it clearer? Oh, I know. Maybe I can spell it backwards. Oh, God. You know what that means. Today's video is all a result of Jeremy Russell over on Patreon, so blame him. If you want to make the hawk talk, sign up today. And whilst you're at it, join us on the Flying to Graceland World Tour as we reach 100k subscribers. And if you say that you're not, you're just a bunch of liars. And of course, if you know a wrestler that can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha, shove their name in the comments, Jack. All right, it's TNA Relic. Was it mercifully quick or should I fetch my brick? Now a lot of this run is going to be closely linked to Black Rain who has dust in Rhodes at his worst. I already made a video on him, but as I only focus on the moves done by the wrestler who features in the video, this should still feel plenty different. Our guy debuts at Genesis 2007 in a Little Shop of Horrors match. The winner of this match gets a key to open a box. Abyss wins the match and then unlocks the box. Our guy is locked inside the box and this is how he debuts, so it's not exactly a good start. He sprays Abyss in the face of the mist and then he joins Black Rain with a beatdown on him. In TNA this is how they apparently reward someone for winning a match. If I was Abyss I would ask to send my present back. They put Abyss in the box and they shove him off the ramp. Just on a side note, 2007 is probably my favourite year of TNA wrestling. This is good news for me because no matter how bad Reddick's run is in TNA I still kind of enjoy it in a weird way. I'm planning on making a video on 2007 TNA soon, but there's one really good reason for why I like it so much. There's one man who always appears in TNA, but he barely did this year. One small, wacky, crappy, guitar-wheeling carny, wearing a nappy. If he didn't have the title, he just wasn't happy. Most of his wins are a result of a lackey, and he always plays the baddie. His wife just looks tacky, and we all know him as Slap. Match 1, Triple Threat, Relic vs Black Rain vs The Idiot Abyss. So Relic is portrayed by Johnny the Bull Stamboni from the FBI in WCW and WWE, and he came into TNA at a time when monster gimmicks were prevalent for some reason. Relic has a wrinkly old mask that for some reason makes him look like a sad old man. He's dressed like a gladiator as well, so apparently this is where Nick Aldis got his original gimmick from. Relic immediately boots Abyss as he works with Black Rain. Although this is a triple threat, it's really more like a handicap match. Abyss starts to come back and he boots Relic square in the mask. The monster wants a double choke slam, but it doesn't work. Abyss jumps at Relic, who hits him with a spine buster. He doesn't make the pin though, as the monsters all fight on the outside of the ring. They tease tension between Black Rain and Relic, but nothing happens. Relic then tries to set Abyss up, but he reverses it, and Rain crashes from the top into Relic. Abyss squashes both men in the corner. Then he hits a choke slam on Relic, but Black Rain breaks up the pin. I really thought they were about to have him lose on his debut. That would have been dumb, wouldn't it? Relic charges at Abyss, who spins him through the air with the black hole slam, and then he covers him for the three. Oh. Well, that was pointless. They attack Abyss after the match because they're bad losers. That's Sressel, spelt backwards, by the way. Rhino saves Abyss and clears the ring. Not a good debut at all. It's an S. He lost, he was unimpressive, and it was a bad match. I know I was hoping to get the first day on Ring of the Hawk, but today it doesn't look like it's that day. Match 2 from the depths of hell, Relic versus the War Machine Rhino. Rhino beats Relic up with ease as he beats into the punch. Rhino's throwing him around the ring like he's nothing. Rhino hits a belly to belly. He then tries to hit the gore, but Relic dodges and he hits a spine buster instead. Relic is frantically choking Rhino, but he doesn't pass out. Back at his feet, Relic kicks Rhino straight back down. Rhino keeps trying to fight back, but Relic hits a kick to the back of his legs and a boot straight to the face. Rhino swears with pain as he romps around the outside of the ring. This looked like it legit hurt him. Rhino eventually does fight back with a much nicer spine buster. Then he hits the gore for game over. Black Rain jumps Rhino after the match and Abyss also joins the party. But really, I'm just wondering why they're even bothering with Relic. He's already lost twice, he looks pretty useless. It was better than the last match, but it's still only a D. But if you look at that backwards, it might look like a B. But trust me, it's definitely not. Actually, it's probably an S because the Hawk wouldn't want to work with anyone who could damage his face for real. Match 3, Turning Point 2007, match of 10,000 tacks. It's just a hardcore match, really, with tacks everywhere. From the deepest, darkest corner of his mind is Black Rain and his tag team partner from the depths of hell, Relic. 
versus Raven, who's substituting for Rhino, as apparently that kick in the last match gave him a stinger, and I ain't talking Steve Borden, and he teams up with Abyss. It doesn't go well for Relic and Black Rain to begin with. Everyone is fighting on the outside, and Raven dives on top of them for the ring. It continues going badly for Relic as Raven hits him with a Russian leg sweep into the barriers. They then do a long double feature, but I can't even see what's happening. It looks like they're trying to avoid a copyright strike. Raven and Relic seem to be fighting in the crowd. Abyss has a bed of tacks on a table, but <laughs> there's a raised lip around the bed, so it would actually minimise the effect of the tacks to anyone who was slammed onto it. Relic tries to sneak up on Abyss with a chair, and Abyss simply boxes it straight into his face, hardly looking. Relic has another one of those stupid tack beds. Then he gets a handful of tacks and he punches Raven. <laughs> Surely that would hurt Relic instead. In the ring, Relic is smacking Raven with more tacks and trying to make him swallow them. Relic then delivers the kick to Raven that took Rhino out. Relic tries to reach for a bag of tacks, but Raven cuts him off. Abyss comes back into the match after a long absence as he's hitting Black Rain and Relic for kendo stick. Black Rain wants to hit Raven with a stick, but he turns it around and throws him for a table on the outside. Relic is going to be left in a handicap situation now. Raven stacks him on a board across the barrier and he tries to dive onto him with the elbow but Relic dodges it and Raven crash and burns through the bed. Relic then manages to gather the bag of tacks from the top and then lays it out in the ring with Abyss waiting. Abyss tries to choke slam him into them but Relic sprays something in his eyes. Relic starts kicking him and Abyss falls to one knee but Abyss is just playing possum and gives him the black hole slam into the tacks for the free. God this guy is useless. So, so far his move count stands at two spinebusters, some kicks and three losses. It's another S. Shut it, man. Yes. This is going to be a long night. This is actually worse than Black Rain so far. And you can spell that backwards and shove it in the depths of your ass. Match four, from the depths of your ass, Relic, and from the deepest, darkest part of your ass, Black Rain, versus the Latin American exchange, Homicide and Hernandez. The monsters jump LAX straight away. Homicide tries a drop toe hole, but it doesn't work for him. Homicide then nails a jumping spinning bulldog from the top for a two count. LAX try to work together to take Relic down but it doesn't work, but then it eventually does. Suddenly out of nowhere the monsters hit a pretty nice double team move on Homicide. The Homicidal one then continues getting battered with a painful looking kick. Rain and Relic start cheating because Hernandez has been done. Eventually Hernandez does get the tag and he hits a big shoulder on Relic, then he slams Relic with the spine buster. It looks like it's over as Homicide hits a gringo cutter but Relic manages to kick out. Then Relic misses his charge in the corner and Homicide rolls him up for the free. Wow, four matches and four losses. Why couldn't Black Rain get pinned instead? The match was the best so far, but that's not because of Relic. It's a D. Match 5, Relic versus Kaz. Relic charges straight at Kaz. He's in a bad mood because he keeps losing all his matchups. Relic tries to launch Kaz in the corner, but impressively lands on his feet. Kaz then starts slicing Relic up with kicks. Then Relic ends up on the outside and Kaz crashes down on top of him. Back in the ring, Relic is randomly on the top rope. Unsurprisingly, he misses the following leg drop. This gives Kaz the opportunity to boot him square in the face with a drop kick. Kaz then rolls him up for a two count. Kaz is really impressive here and he sweeps Relic's legs out and then lands on him with a leg drop. Kaz then finally gets slowed down as Relic boots him and gets a two. Then the match just suddenly ends as Kaz hits the wave of the future. It wasn't really surprising, was it? Black Rain jumps Kaz and he hits him with a stick called Darkness Falls. Then, uh, then they put Misty the rat in a bag and they shove it over Kaz's head. I feel sorry for that poor rat. I enjoyed this one again, but I don't really think that's because of Relic. He didn't hit any other moves than a boot, so it's another D. Match 6. Silent Night, Bloody Night. Relic. They keep saying that Relic is Black Rain's deepest, darkest nightmare and that's why he's here. I don't know if that really explains it. Versus Shark Boy. Versus Black Rain. Versus the Monster Abyss. It's just basically a four-way weapons match with a Christmas gimmick. Relic points to his neck and sprays red mist into the air. Relic is opening up presents and he's got a golf club now. Unfortunately for him, Shark Boy takes it away from him and he tries to go for a birdie with Relic. Something incredible happens next as in the ring Relic hits a new move. It's a super kick to Abyss. Then he works with Black Rain to hit the Spinebuster clothesline combination on the idiot. Shark Boy continues to do well against Relic as he takes him out of his knees. Relic and Rain then have a little fallout over who's going to beat up Shark Boy. Then they throw the shark into the barbed wire Christmas tree. Black Rain tries to throw Relic into the tree, but he manages to put the brakes on and clotheslines Black Rain. Then they just randomly start working together again, and they do a face buster move to Shark Boy. Then they fight over who's going to pin the shark. Abyss stops them from arguing as he clotheslines them both down to shake them up. 
Abyss opens up a present and gets a barbed wire baseball bat, and he smacks the other monsters with it. Abyss scatters tacks on the ground and he mixes it up with shards of broken glass. He tries a double choke slam, but it doesn't work. Abyss and Shark Boy, <laughs> they work together to throw the barbed wire Christmas tree at Black Rain. Abyss has to match one, but the referee is distracted. Then there's a blackout, and Judas Macias is here. He's another monster. He hits the straight to hell finisher on the tax on Abyss. Then randomly Relic does a jackhammer on Shark Boy. And oh my god! Relic wins! Where did that come from? Random as hell, I think this is the only time he ever did this move. I'll give him a C because he probably had the best match so far. It's most likely the best he's going to get on this entire video. And he actually won a match, fair play. Match 7 over the top rope gauntlet match. Both Relic and Rain are in this one, but they show up during the advert break as they're not important enough. Steiner hits a belly to belly on Relic. Kevin Nash is also here and he gives Relic a boot to the face. Then Samoa Joe comes in and he completely destroys Relic. He squashes him. It's like a small foreign car falling on him. It looks like Booker T is going to eliminate him, but then Black Rain throws Booker out and Relic holds on. I have no idea how he's still in this match. I spoke too soon, I think Samoa Joe just eliminated him, but the cameraman was more interested in Kurt Angle and Christian, and this was completely the right decision. The match is eventually won by Christian, after Kevin Nash eliminates himself because he's friends with Samoa Joe, and then Christian rolls up Joe, but he sure didn't know. Try saying that backwards and I'll hit you with a brick. It's an S oh, and it made me feel sick. Match 8, Relic. He's now being billed as from Salem instead of the depths of my ass. I thought Salem was where the witches were from, not strange wrinkly bold men. He's taken on Showtime Eric Young, who unfortunately is scared of monsters. Relic looks like he's taken a dump in the ring, which is very appropriate because it's a good way to sum up his matches so far. Relic sticks his tongue out at Eric Young and then kicks him in the face. Eric tries to box him, but it's not having much effect. But then Eric hawks up and floors him. Then Relic puts a mask on top of the mask and Eric Young screams with fear. It's just goofy comedy stuff, really. Then Relic hits a nice clothesline and it's the end of the match. Every time he wins, I'm in complete shock. It was short and stupid. No one could possibly care about Relic at this point, oh, especially about him beating Eric Young. It's an S. Match 9, Relic, whose name on the Titan Tron has the K's turned backwards. I forgot to mention this earlier, this has actually been going on the whole video. It's almost like they're backwards. And he takes on Kaz. Relic is seriously outmatched here and also outsped. Kaz knocks Relic out of the ring with a clothesline and then he crashes down on top of him. Surprisingly, Relic manages to catch Kaz with a boot on the outside. They get back in the ring and Relic whips Kaz into the corner with authority. The Relic man is determined to learn a new move in this match as he fights to apply a new submission hold. Kaz keeps fighting it off and runs into the corner and flips over in the corner to cover Relic. It went two minutes. Black Rain comes up to help Relic beat down Kaz after the match. Eric tries to help but he's scared of monsters. I'm scared of watching any more of these bad matches. My head is killing me from smashing it into this desk. It's an S if you didn't guess. Match 10, Shark Boy and the Curry Man versus Relic and Black Rain. Relic boots Curry Man straight in his plate, but he doesn't spill any sauce. Maybe a few popper dogs hit the ground. Rain and Relic then do some double team work next and they drop Curry Man on his face. Shark Boy dodges Relic and just a Lufez press on Black Rain. The Curry Man then stacks Rain and Relic up in the corner and crashes into them. Kaz hits Black Rain in the gut with something and then the shark nails the stunner on the bin bag man. And it's over. Well at least it wasn't Relic taking the pin for once, but I'll tell you one thing, it's an S. Eric Young is still scared of monsters again after the match as there's a massive beatdown. Eric is starting to get more and more intimidated by the monsters as he cuts a panic promo on the next show. Despite how scared he is, he's still able to spell words backwards. Match 11, Battle Royal. Despite our guy having a size advantage over most of these guys, he's not really doing anything. Jay Lethal almost eliminates Relic, but he just about hangs in there. Then something finally happens. Relic Gorilla Press Slam Shark Boy out the ring. Probably the most impressive thing he's done in this entire video. Relic actually outlasts a lot of people as he comes down to the final three. He super kicks Curry Man. Another person in the final three is Jimmy. Don't let him near a mic rave. It's Jimmy Rave, and I'm ready to get this match over with so we can party! Woo! We haven't talked about this guy for a while. I believe Jimmy hasn't quite reached the target on his GoFundMe to help him get a prosthetic arm. So go check that out and see how he's getting on. Curryman slams his ass into Relic's face, but then Jimmy kicks him. The Curryman then eliminates Jimmy Rave, but Relic knees him square in the back. It then looks nailed on that Relic is going to win the match as he throws Curryman out. Curryman lands on Jimmy Rave's back and he dances, so he's still in the match. Curryman gets back in the ring and clotheslines Relic out of the ring and the crowd go nuts. 
I mean, it was a good entertaining match with a sweet finish. But is that down to Relic or Curry Man? Let's give it a D and move on. Match 12, Destination X 2008. Black Rain and Relic. You know, I don't know why he's still bothering anymore at this point. And they take on Kaz and Eric Young, who's still scared of monsters. Kaz outpaces Relic again and sweeps his legs out. Then he slingshots himself into the ring. Kaz was so hot at this point in his career. Kaz takes out Relic again with a dragon screw. Relic is really struggling so much, so he tags the bin bag now and then. Eric Young is still scared of monsters, and that's pretty much the story of the match. Kaz has Black Rain in a pinning predicament, but Relic charges at him, and Kaz flawlessly hits some northern lights on Relic. Rain and Relic double team Kaz because Eric Young is an idiot. Suddenly out of nowhere, Relic hits an overhead release suplex, but he only gets a two count. Still cool to see him do something different. Rain and Relic then continue working together on Kaz because Eric Young is still scared to come into the match. Relic tries another big time suplex, but Kaz lands on his feet. This guy is unbelievable at this point and he kicks Relic down. Kaz still can't tag out the match though because Eric Young is scared of monsters. Relic hits another big power move on Kaz with the Spinebuster. This is a great match. Eric Young finally decides to come into the match, but he takes one look at Relic's ugly wrinkled face and he has to run to the lavatory to throw up. Then Kaz manages to take out both monsters as everyone is down. Kaz that is Zack spelt backwards desperately needs a tag, but he's on his own. Then Superman music hits and Super Eric debuts and walks out. He dives from the top with a double drop kick. Then he gets Rain and Relic in the corner, he stacks them both up on his shoulders and hits a double Death Valley driver, and it's over. Damn, really good match, the crowd are going nuts. Relic's best performance by a country mile. He did a lot better than his partner here too. In fact, that's a trend that's been going on throughout this video. Relic's improving and Black Rain's getting worse. I'm surprisingly giving this match an A. It might just be because of Kaz and Eric, but Relic actually paid his part well in this match. Match 13, Relic and Black Rain team up yet again. I bet they wish they could just rewind time and go backwards and wrestle some of these matches differently. And they take on the Motor City Machine Guns. Rain and Relic jump the guns because they're bad guys. Relic scores a straight knockdown with the clothesline on Shelly. The monsters then continue to win and they drop Shelly on his face. Relic decides to super kick Saban on the ring apron. <laughs> he seemed a bit extreme, he wasn't expecting that. Then Shelly takes both the monsters out of his own and he brings his partner in. Saban hits the head scissors on Relic. Saban then boots him in the back of the head. The guns are firing on four cylinders now, and they do a double boot to Relic's head. The monsters then regain the advantage as Rain drops Saban on his face, and Relic follows it with a big time clothesline. And then, oh wow, it's over. I'm in shock. I can't believe the monsters beat the Motor City machine guns. Perhaps this is the start of something new for them. It's a C, not bad at all. Rain has a mic and he threatens Super Eric. He walks out and beats both the monsters up in seconds and makes them look stupid. So now the win was pointless and it's a D. Match 14, eight man tag, the fart and <laughs> session team up with Black Rain and Relic, AKA the Monsters of Rock. And they take on the Motor City Machine Guns and LAX. Hernandez looks like a predator with this goatee. The match is basically an X Division showcase. Eventually the monsters have enough and drop homicide on his face. It then becomes a showcase for Hernandez. The guns dive on top of the monsters to take them out of the match. Hernandez eventually pins Jimmy, don't let him near a Mike Rave, after hitting him with the border toss. The monsters are bad losers, so they attack Hernandez. Kaz makes the save, but eventually the numbers advantage gets the better of him. Then Super Eric makes the save again. Relic was barely in the match at all. It's an S. Match 15, cuffed in a cage. Oh God, not this again. Rock and Rave Infection versus Kaz and Eric. Oh, the monsters take out EY on his way to the ring, but the TNA management tell Kaz, you've got to go, no time for this, who cares if your partner's hurt, get out to the ring and wrestle, it doesn't matter if he's dead, you've got to go. So Kaz is on his own in this one. The next team is Relic and Black Rain. Also in the match is the Motor City Machine Guns, the Latin American Exchange, and finally, Scott Steiner and Make Believe Muscle, P.T. Williams. Steiner gets in an argument with some fat slob pub boy at ringside. You know, I'd rather watch this argument than this match. So the rules of the match here is that it's the last man standing, but no, no, not for pins. You get eliminated by being handcuffed to the cage. Scott Steiner takes out Argyle with a suplex. Then everyone works together to eliminate Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner is the first man eliminated from the match. A match that included Jimmy Rave, Black Rain, P.T. Williams, Eric Young returns to the match, but he's still scared of monsters and leaves. The monsters hit a cool combination DDT to spike P.T. Williams, and then they handcuff him to the cage. 
Kaz boots Relic down, but somehow it's like the previous elimination matches where somehow Relic is outlasting the competition. Super Eric comes out and he does a crossbody from the top of the cage because he's not scared of monsters and he takes out the remaining guys. It then comes down to just the monsters and Super Eric. It makes me laugh that Stein has just been stuck to the cage for 15 minutes. The monsters think they've got Eric cuffed to the cage but he reverses it around and somehow he cuffs Relic to the cage. It was incredible how he did this, it was almost backwards. Then he locks up Black Rain to win the match. It was a D, nothing much to say about cuffed in the cage. Match 16, final match, Douches Wild Tag Match. Relic and Black Rain versus the Dudley Boys. Bubba takes out Relic with a side slam. Devon then gets a two count on him. The monsters do eventually turn it around as Relic boots Devon in the head and then Rain hits a neck breaker. Devon hits a big time suplex on Relic to turn the match back in the Dudley Boys favour. Bubba then hits the rock bottom on Relic but it's only a two count and no one can believe that the match isn't over. Then the match is over as the Dudleys hit the 3D on Relic. This match is an F. Now that this video is over, I only really have two things left to do. First of all, I have to decide <laughs> if... <laughs> I have to decide if I want him on Ring of... <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Ring of the Hawk. No, I don't want him to go on the Ring of the Hawk roster. Come on, what would I do with him? And he won about three times. He did improve a bit as the video progressed. I don't think he was as bad as Black Rain. Let me know down below if you think this was a D or an S run. I'm giving you, the viewers of the Ring of the Hawk show, the vote today. I will pin a comment. Thumbs up for a D and comment for an S. And the final thing, well, I just hope by now you would have figured it out. Did you know this might come as a shock to you? You might need to sit down and take this in. Take some deep breaths, because what I'm about to tell you will shock you. Relic is actually killer spelt backwards. I know this might have come to a shock to some of you. I just thought this might be an incredible revelation to some of you. I mean, this is the most intelligent thing to ever come in TNA. It's crazy that they never pointed this out on TV. If you haven't worked it out yet, I'm being sarcastic. It was pointed out every time he was on TV. Well, as they say in the TV industry, that's another one in the can. And if you didn't know Relic was killer spelt backwards, I'll hit you with a frying pan. Hey, you brother! Have you ever wished you could soar through the air like the hawk and make the lady squawk like me? Well, you should check out my Punch to the Gut specials only on the Hawk's brand new store, dude. These t-shirts have a proven success rate jack to improve your attractiveness by an average of roughly 7.6%. And increase nose shrinkage by 14.2%, and that's more than a den. We don't sell the all new blonde just for men, that turns brown haired potters into someone who looks hotter, but we do have smack back and shove back hats to hide your ugly hair. You should do either to be fair, so if you wanna make the ladies care, get yourself some hawk wear. Click the link down where? Down there. But don't just take the hawk's word for it, Jack. Here are some words from Brother Peace. Before shopping with the hawk, he was just Brother Piss. But now at night, it's him who's giving your mama a kiss. If you love Marky D and Ring of the Hawk, you need to go to the Hawk store. The Hawk store. The Hawk store. And if you don't, you're a whore. Even if you're a massive fatty, you can still buy one. So, go to the Hawk store. If you don't, you're a whore. While you're at it, cop one of the all new Fly to Graceland World Tour shirts as we fly to 100k subscribers, Jack. Celebrate that you are responsible for helping Hawkamania grow. Plus, it's a pretty nice shirt to show.